All right, here we are at the Black Voices Artist Chat. And today I have the beautiful Teresa Ford, who is performing her show this Sunday, October 17th at 7 p.m. And her show is entitled Annie Lovejoy's Juke Joint. All right. Yes. That, All right. And we, have, we have somebody in the background right there, too. Who I guess it's been, <laughs> this is the musical director and my husband, Mr. Kenny Ford. What's up, Kenny Ford? <laughs> Thank you for being here. Let's see, let's see. Let's pan over there a little we can bit. See him. We can see him. And then maybe we'll have him play a little bit for us a little bit later. Okay. Um, That's fine. So let's talk about Annie Lovejoy. Who was Annie Lovejoy and what was the juke joint all about? Well, Annie Lovejoy was my grandmother mm -hmm. and uh, they had several generations of bootlegging in my family. And, uh, you know, we did the whole background check thing. Uh, my sister was getting her master's degree somewhere. They let her do this whole thing on the maternal or the paternal side of our family. So she decided to do the paternal side and found out that, it, it, this is really funny, but people in our family were pirates mm -hmm. and they were also slave abolitionists because the Lovejoys are slave abolitionists and all of the Lovejoys are related because it's an odd name, you right. know? Right. And um, and so anyway, uh, my my grandfather, um, Ezekiel Lovejoy, was from the West Indies, as they used to say back then. The West Indies, West Indian. You know where? And in, because in my Jamaica. Family, my family. In Jamaica. Okay. My family. Uh -huh. West Indies and uh, then he came over to the United States. He had these dreams of, you know, he was he was bootlegging in um, in Jamaica. But, you know, when he came to America, he could really, you know, uh, do a lot more, but also my uh, grandmother's father, Homer, Homer C. Nix, who they were Nixes, N-I-X, in Birmingham, Alabama. Mm -hmm. He was already a bootlegger. So when um, um, when uh, Lovejoy came along, Ezekiel Lovejoy, and then he married my grandmother, it was like a family thing. So they were all making all this bootleg liquor. And uh, by trade, he was a brick mason, but he also had this bootlegging business going with uh, my grandma Annie, and then they had a speakeasy mm -hmm. and uh, a, a, a juke joint, and it, it evolved into uh, eventually being up in Cleveland, Ohio, too. So, okay. and, and it's really kind of funny because my mom is a Pentecostal pastor. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's interesting, right? <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She has a whole other story. She got with my dad. She had three children by him. and uh, But she didn't go into the bootleg business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She became a hardcore. She's an apostle now. Right, right. Wow. So let's talk about um, your your show. And so you're going to be doing some covers, right? Yes. And 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 how did you decide to to put everything together? Like how what tell us a little bit about the process of putting it Well, you know, I had been having this idea for a long time to do uh, a show about the first recording artist that ever existed. You know, uh, we think about like uh, Billie Holiday and Ella Fitzgerald, but they weren't the first recording artist. Mm -hmm. The first recording recording artist was like Ma Rainey and Bessie Smith yes. and Ethel Waters mm -hmm. and Sophie Tucker and Ruth Edding. These were white, these were white women, but these were the, this was the mix that was going on at, at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was, I'm just very intrigued with uh, what those women, especially the women, I, I know it was hard for the men too, but especially the black women, what they had to go through in order to become a recording artist and and have have names like that you mm -hmm. know wasn't that easy to do something like that because you got to know that there was like i don't know how many great singers roaming around that we never even heard about yeah. but these women were able to figure out how to maneuver their way into the professional world of entertainment um through being able to be recording artists you know some of them did start off in vaudeville first mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and then they 
Because, you know, recording was, you know, in the, like 1910 or, or 1905, 1920, it was really just getting started good. But those women were hits then. So wow. I'm very intrigued with that. And I had thought about doing a show with more than one woman, which I might still do. Mm -hmm. I had this whole idea that I was going to do with them. But then when um, the idea got presented to me to do the solo performance, I said, well, I... I want to do these same songs, but you know, I got to think of something that would be interesting. And then I thought about my grandmother. I thought about them running that juke joint and they were so successful doing that. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, they weren't um, uh, struggling at all. Nice. And that's that's, a, good that's a good story to hear. You know, the, the, the African American family that wasn't struggling back then. That's beautiful. And they never got These caught. Of those stories. They never got caught. Well, there. Well, there's that. <laughs> well, and so, and did your grandmother sing as well? She didn't really, but that's the mythical part of the the story. Mm -hmm. You know. And, um, and so I knew her, but I didn't know her that long. Yeah. And so I asked questions, you know, from family members and I have brothers that my dad, my dad was a lot older than my mom. So I have brothers that were, uh, all, not as old as my mom, but like a lot older than me, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and they told me stuff about that life and what they were doing and how successful they were. And, you know, I started looking them up on the um, ancestry.com thing yeah. mm -hmm. and found out, you know, they lived on a really nice street and had a really nice house and stuff like that, you know? So I thought that that story was really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. So I just wove my own concoction of what yeah oh i love that well i can't wait to they see actually it. did have a speakeasy and a juke joint though uh-huh they did have that mm -hmm. and they were and their business was huge and it then then it eventually evolved up north because they had to leave mm -hmm. they had to leave right right yeah, yeah. wow i love it I love, I love the fact that we're going to get to tap into that whole world, you know, and get a sense of, of the vibe back then. So I would like, love when I told my mom I was doing this, she was like, because she knows they were, you know, a little bit in the underworld. Right, <laughs> right, right. Well, there's nothing they can do. We can do about that now, right? Well, they can do about it now because they're they dead. Back then, and that's okay. <laughs> They just created beautiful memories. Yeah. And um, they were upstanding citizens and, and, th and they did have other kinds of jobs too. Mm -hmm. But um, I really do think that the bootlegging superseded their regular jobs. I, they probably used that as a front. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. 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 So I, you know, so I know Mr. Mr. Ford is in the background there, right in front of the beautiful keyboard set that he has there. So I would love to hear a little something. And then, you know, Teresa, if you wanted to chime in and do a little singing, just to give just a little bit, a little bit, just to give everyone a little taste of what they're going to get on Sunday. Being a love. Okay. I'll sing something that I'm not going to sing. Okay. Sunday. All right. Cool. What a day this has been. What a rare mood I'm in. Why it's almost like being in love. There's a smile on my face for the whole human race. Why it's almost like being in love. There's a music in life that speaks to me, yeah, yeah. Like a bell that is ringing just for me. And from the way that I feel when that 
bell starts to peel. A shabba da ree ba bam bo ba dee ba bow. A you do you do you do you do you do thou. A shabba ba ree ba bam bo ba dee ba. A you do you do you do you do you do thou. A rubber the way, a rubber the way. You you went away, you went you went you went you went. Almost like being, almost like being. Almost like being in love. Yeah. Ooh, I love it. And I love how you guys work together. It's obvious that you guys have been working together for a minute. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm still with him because he can change keys. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, excellent. Why don't we? Um, why don't you tell the folks the name of your show again and when it is? It's Annie Lovejoy's Juke Joint. It's Sunday, October seventeenth. 2021 at the White Fire Theater at Ventura and Sunny Slope. <laughs> exactly. I want them to know where that is. Yep. And get and there on time because there's street parking. Yes. It's good. Yes, it's good exactly. Parking. And it's going to be in Sherman Oaks and 25 bucks. 25, 25 bucks. bucks. You can get tickets at www.whitefiretheater.com and that's White Fire with an R-E. All right, great. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing your show. I can't wait to see it. And thank you so much. All right. Love